guys. All good. All good. Right. So we've we've hit the three o'clock mark. So uh, are we ready to start? Yeah. Let's go. Brilliant. Okay. All right. Well, uh, welcome everyone to another Reach Desk webinar. Uh, this one's called Gift Black Pro. Um, today, I have the absolute pleasure that I'm joined by the dynamic duo Kelly Walters and Leanne Chesco from Sales Loft and Demand Base, respectively. How are you both? Yeah, good. Thank you. Happy to be here. Excited to chat things all gifting. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, it's, a, it's an exciting topic um, and one that's close to my heart. So I think it's going to be a good session. Good stuff. Cool. All right, let's crack on. Uh, but before we do, I'm not going to introduce you both. Uh, can you please, for everyone watching and everyone watching the recorded version, please introduce yourselves. Um, that'd be great. Kelly, do you want to kick us off? Yeah, sure. I was kind of waiting to know who to ju jump in first. Um, so I'm Kelly Walters. I am the Senior Marketing Manager here at Sales Loft. I basically am in charge of all things demand gen for the EMEA team at Sales Loft. Um, and have just been, it's just been a pleasure to see it grow so much. If you don't know Sales Loft already, we're basically the only complete sales engagement platform that contains all things cadencing and um, opportunity management and conversation intelligence all rolled into one really cool sales platform that's um, great to use as a marketer and a salesperson. Nice. Thank you, Kelly. And Leanne, over to you. Yeah, I'm Leanne Chesco. I'm senior manager of the uh, EMEA marketing region here at Demand Base. So similar to Kelly, I have responsibility for everything EMEA marketing at Demand Base. So specifically focused on demand generation and building pipeline for the sales team. Um, and then everything else that fits under that sort of marketing remit. So yeah, I've been here um, just over five years um, and demand based for those of you that don't know. So we are an account based go to market platform for sales and marketing teams. So helping um, companies to identify who are the right accounts to target based on um, in market um, buying signals. So things like intent data, helping you engage those accounts through things like advertising and personalization um, and just give, bringing all of that account intelligence or within the platform so you know who the right accounts are to target and what messaging you should use throughout those different stages of the buyer journey. Nice. Thank you both. Uh, two powerhouses from two uh, incredible um, technologies out there that it's just um, maximizing the go-to-market movement for so many businesses out there, particularly in this funny old time we're in. Okay, so as I mentioned before, um, today's theme is Gift Like a Pro. I think there are so many ways to use direct mail gifting to create and accelerate pipeline. As well as like keep your customers engaged and fully recognized. Um, we've seen so many different use cases from sending gifts to increase show rates and discovery calls, opening up deals that have stalled all the way to like, onboarding new customers, driving engagement. There's so much you can do with it. Um, Leanne, I'm going to kick off with you first, if that's all right. Demand base is known for being, I suppose, the ABX pioneers, but I'm really curious, how do you guys use um, gifting to and direct mail to supercharge your programs? Yeah, so a lot of the similar use cases that you've already mentioned, Alex. So, um, so we've used it for things like um, for in, in customer scenarios. So we recently um, launched, I'll say recently, six months ago, <laughs> so not as recent, but uh, relaunched our platform because we've made um, several acquisitions over the past 18 months. So we've used it for customers that have migrated to our new platform. We've also used it for customers that have completed our ABM certification programs, um, for customers that have changed jobs, um, and then for prospects as well that have either you know, started a, a job at one of our target accounts. <clears throat> we've used it as a way to get into target accounts. Um, yeah, there's, there's lots of different sort of use cases as well. Um, but we're, the way that we're sort of, moving to, with it is having one sort of key um, big quarterly direct mail send and that will be to key um, prospects within our target accounts and so we'll leverage things like intent data through the demand based platform to identify who are the right accounts and contacts within that account and then we've identified like a common use case so that will be our sort of big quarterly direct mail campaign then we'll have um, what we're calling reach desk days. And this is something that's fairly new. So we're, we've just created these, but really focused more having that one to one and one to few um, sort of out um, approach where we're really um, 
heavily sort of researching those accounts and key contacts within those. So these will be more sort of C level contacts. And then we're sending something really personalized. And then we're also having sort of um, e gifts tied to seasonal um, sort of events. So things like international coffee days, and we've got plans for World Earth Day in April as well. So that's sort of our, our approach. So from a sort of a court, we look at it from a quarterly sort of basis and how we can do that um, more sort of strategic sense. And then we have the tactical sense sort of in between that where our sales, our SDR team and our customer success teams have access to the platform and they can, they have lots of different use cases. They have a budget that they can sort of send out to. So we'll give them some guidance, but um, they have relatively free reign <laughs> to, to an extent. <laughs> Nice. Wow. So you, you guys are using it across the entire life cycle. Yeah. Um, and so Kelly, for you, obviously, sales loss is a global leader in sales engagement. Talk to us about how you guys are using direct mail and gifting within, I suppose, your sales process and perhaps even like your cadences. Yeah, sure. Um, well, similarly, we're using it across the entire sales cycle. We use it across our SDR team, AEs, AMs and customer success team as well. Um, we basically, I mean, we preach that you need to do multi-channel prospecting and one of those channels needs to be direct mail. So one of my colleagues, actually, she did like a, she came up with a theory called the, he the hexagon theory, which is all about, um, speaking to like the six sides of your prospect and hitting them on like each of those sides, each of those channels to essentially light them up and really see success. So that would include direct mail as a key one and email, video, social, uh, content sharing, phone. So you have to touch all of these touch points. So of course we do that at Sales Loft and we do it within our cadences. So we have all of those steps out, steps laid out within our cadences. So like for an example with the SDR team in their prospecting cadences, they have like a universal cadence that they use across the team. It gets updated on a quarterly basis and we kind of change it based on what we see from the analytics within sales loft within that quarter. Um, but within those cadences, we have a really early stage step, reach desk step, and then a really late stage reach, de reach desk step. God, that's hard to say. Um, <laughs> and they're like, they're just optional for them. So they don't have to send really early on. They can wait until that later stage, dependent on who the prospect is and how they feel the relationship already is and if they're showing intent. But like an early stage send for them might be just sending a coffee voucher paired with a video being like coffee in a chat. And that's somehow some like that just gives you that extra level of familiarity that people are like, okay, actually I'll take a coffee with this person. I've already seen their face. They're already giving me the coffee voucher. So let's see what sales loft is all about. And nice. then like in the later stages, it might be, we've learned a little bit more about them. We've seen intent across certain things. And um, we've researched them a little bit more heavily and we know that they have a dog or something. We'll send them something for their dog or something like that. Just to like, differentiate from the outset um, and then with AEs we use it a little bit differently sometimes in the lead up to demos so kind of here have a lunch on us um, to enjoy with our demo that's across lunchtime or something like that or in the follow-up to a demo or a meeting so some of the team are like some of the team are better than others at this and I wish everyone was as good as each other but they will really listen out for signals from when they've been speaking to their prospect or notice things even in the room and be able to then identify uh, the perfect gift that they can send. And like, I've got some good examples of this if you want to hear them or I can stop talking because I feel I like- mean, I, I would love, I'd love to hear them in a minute. Um, yeah. <clears throat> you both mentioned this though. I'd, I'd love to get your take on this. It's, it's an ongoing debate in the industry in general where you're kind of using gifting for outreach purposes to break through to someone but you have like basically no relationship before where do each of you guys sit on the stance whereby you either from what you're saying kelly you're sending something like the coffee voucher and you're not asked sort of asking for anything in return you're kind of leading uh with value rather than saying let, let me send you a coffee like if you take a meeting i'll send you a coffee is that what you guys are doing where do you guys sit on that the sort of the reciprocity piece of like holding something back or just giving without asking for anything in return 
I think it's it's giving without anything asking for anything in return it's if it, it's the way that it's worded is more like if now's not the right time you know enjoy a coffee on us anyway and we hope that that is that kind of gesture of goodwill would at least when they are considering a sales engagement platform mean that they do come to us because they already had that kind of good experience there um I think I think one of the like I think it's probably one of those divide the divisive like questions of like whether or not you're almost bribing someone to take a meeting with you and you know like it that was an initial concern for me I was like how do we do this really well and make sure that we tailor our messaging really well to make sure that people don't think we're saying like here's a 50 quid voucher or here's a 10 pound voucher or whatever whoever it's for and whatever it may be for um just for a meeting it's not necessarily about that um and do you know what like what probably one of the more surprising things is we've never had anyone say anything like cut back to us saying like that this is weird that you do this it's it, no one's going to turn around and say that they're going to be like how lovely that's really nice either I'm not interested so I won't accept your gift I'll be interested in the future I'll accept it now and we'll take a meeting in the future or I'll take I'll take it now and I'll take the meeting love it okay so you're on you're on the side of just just giving uh, what side of the fence do you sit on, Leanne? Yeah, the same, actually. So we do that. And obviously, we've got a, we're in that sort of unique position because we're it comes down to like picking the right accounts as well. So, you know, we're using again, we're using demand base to do that. So looking at those accounts that are on our target account list that we've already identified that match our ideal customer profile and that are shown those correct um, sort of buying signals. So if we've got accounts that meet that criteria that are researching like ABM platforms, that's a great candidate to send a direct mail to. So we might not have had any other engagement with them prior to that. So I think, you know, and we're reaching out with the basis or on the basis of like, we can see that you're researching ABM with the leaders in the market. This is what demand base does. In the meantime, enjoy, you know, whatever that gift is. And we, we've sent lots of different things in the past. We tend to find alcohol works pretty well. Um, but we've also sent, you know, we would also sort of tie that in with something like educational. So we've got this ABX book that's written by our CMO. That's really, that's been really, really popular and that's had the sort of highest amount of redemption. So we send that, that's something educational and we might send some other sort of branded items along with it as well. Um, but I think, you know, we're actually using the sort of power of our platform and people are seeing that. So it's less like, so they sort of understanding, okay, I, I, I understand why I'm receiving this. So we've actually had a pretty good response to that type of outreach. Interesting. So that's, that's down to a lot of the intent signals that you're using. You're being very intelligent and like prioritizing those accounts. Love it. Okay. Um, I'm going to come into some of the specific use cases because I've heard some amazing ones from both of you in the past. Before we do, we've got a couple of questions um, for people uh, listening in. <clears throat> One of them is from Laura. How do you use reach desk when targeting more senior contacts? who perhaps don't need slash see as much value in a gift card or a gift. So um, are you changing your strategy either at sales loft or demand base based on persona or seniority? Yeah, absolutely. And that's something that came up in a recent, so we do what we call ABM standups at demand base. We do those every month um, and we have a look into each of our sales reps accounts and kind of see where the gaps are in terms of specific personas and the engagement. So we've had one, for a particular group of accounts where we've seen there's, there's a gap for, you know, C-level contacts, we have to treat those very differently to how we treat somebody within more of like a sort of a, a junior role to that. So our gifting is, our, our approach to gifting is we're going to spend more money um, based on the persona. So if it's a C-level person, the cost per gift goes up. But also we, we also have that approach for the account as well. So the higher up it is in terms of our account tier. So if it's our tier one accounts, which which we have a one to one approach to and the spend per account is higher, then we apply that same um, sort of methodology to this is we're going to spend more on gifting for the for this group of accounts as well. So, yeah, definitely the, the type of gift for the persona we would spend more money on. OK, nice. So you're saying it's, it's not just persona or seniority, it's, it's actually your account as well. So you're yeah. you about the spend per account. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, Kelly, how, how's that um, work for you guys over at Salesloft? Yeah, it's, it's, it's quite similar. Um, and, you know, if it's an enterprise account or a top tier account, a tier one account, we call it, um, we would 
spend a lot more on that account in general. But I think as well, it's more as it's much as about as much as it is about how much you are investing in that account. It's also like the time investment as well. And I think that's probably where it differs for us persona wise. The team will spend a lot more time really delving in and researching into that prospect to find something that is truly special to them. So like that could be and I'm just thinking of an example now and one of my colleagues found out that there was a prospect who really, really supported a specific charity and was actually running the marathon for them. So he sent a voucher that he could then donate to his own own charity of choice, whether it be his favorite one that he was already running for, or whether it be another charity. Um, And in addition to that, we just donated to his marathon run. Oh my God, that's incredible. So using a charitable donation as a way to break through. Um, absolutely love that. Okay, I think that's probably a good segue into um, some specific use cases. So you've mentioned one there using like charitable donations. Um, maybe you, Kelly, well, what are you guys seeing from, let's say an SDR standpoint, or even like your, your account executives uh, that are either helping um, create new pipeline or um, move that, that pipeline forward? Um, I think in terms of, which types of gift we send the SDRs are more likely to send e-gifts and it is more okay. likely to be either coffee vouchers or like a spend on anything voucher delivery voucher like have a great Friday kind of thing like get your Friday dinner on us um or like an Amazon for some like an Amazon voucher for something that they actually know that they are gonna like where because they probably haven't spent really any time with that person yet so they don't know them very well they don't know exactly what to send it's hard enough buying christmas presents for my own family so they we're asking them to send gifts without knowing that person at all really but where when it comes to aes like i said earlier they've become much more in tune to listening out for for what people like or what they're up to at the weekend and then they can think about gifts that might be suitable so um one of my one of my colleagues really recently he noticed that when speaking to a prospect, his office was completely decked out with like Star Wars stuff. So he was clearly, clearly a huge fan of Star Wars. So they finished the demo, they had a really got a good conversation, things went positively, came out of the demo, and then we kind of had a chat about it. And he was like, he's a massive Star Wars fan, what can I get him? And so we we brainstormed and we basically sent him a I think it was, I'm not a Star Wars fan, like a stormtrooper. Like yeah. build your own stormtrooper, like helmet head thing out of Lego. And um, sorry to everyone who is a Star Wars fan, <laughs> um, <laughs> out, that you could build out of Lego and got it delivered to his house. And he absolutely loved it. it. Turned out he was not only a huge Star Wars fan, but also a Lego collector, which just was a stroke of luck. No and, way. Um, right. Things went very smoothly from there on out, basically. <laughs> nice. Did they become a customer? Yes. Oh, I love that. I think awesome. so anyway. Okay. Uh, well, unless let's just say let's just say yes for now. <laughs> yes. Um <laughs> that's all right. Um I love that use case. So so what what you're what you guys are doing is you're listening out for uh, parts of the conversation that you might have already had within the sales process and you're sending like custom gifts or examples after that um to sort of keep the relationship moving forward. Absolutely love that. Um Dan, any any specific use cases that you've seen that you've absolutely loved within your team? So we've had a couple of ones. There was a prospect, a couple of prospects, actually. So one um, where our SDR found that the guy had been on Come Dine With Me. So he was really into his cookery. So he sent him a gift. Um, I think he was really into steaks. So he sent him something. I think it was an Amazon voucher that he could use to spend on. I think there were some suggestions of like sort of steak kits and knives, knife sets. Um, So that was very well received. And there was also just ones where it's like a prospect's birthday so sort of looking into that um sort of detail sending them some champagne um we also found out that same prospect is on a, a speaking panel with our cmo um so just doing that kind of research so where the sdr then sent him that champagne he went to the event was able to meet him in person this was a few weeks ago and really sort of build up that relationship with him we also had our CMO reach out to him and say like hey glad that you're um, looking forward to speaking on this panel with you here's a copy of my book so we actually sent him two things through um, through reach desk and then had that 
face-to-face -face interaction. So we've got, I think we've got demo stage. We're not quite a customer yet. So maybe ask me in sort of three months time. So hopefully, but he just loved that. He was you know, feeling the love on his birthday, getting those extra gifts. And, and we also used our, our CMO to sort of do some additional outreach as well. Love it. Absolutely love it. These are very cool use cases. Um, okay, nice. Um, so we've got a couple of questions I just want to get through just whilst we go through it. Um, Nick's asked, how do you approach resistance to gifting within your teams? So I think what, what we've seen is that sometimes when you introduce any tool, uh, some people will not want to adopt it, some will, it's often with sales perhaps. I'm a salesperson, so I'm allowed to say that. Um, have you seen resistance through um, using a tool like ours or gifting in general? And if so, like how are you approaching that to sort of encourage adoption? Yeah, wow. so not sort of resistance. Um, so what we've done a lot of um, onboarding calls with the Reach Desk team to get everybody trained up. And we've also done a refresher. Um, particularly, we saw one of our um, one of our teams really wasn't sort of leveraging the platform. So we had a, a session with our CSM and, and just sort of refreshing, just understanding like what are the things that you want to see Um you know, available to you in the platform and just having that sort of walkthrough. So nobody's resistant. I think they're just, it's just reminding them that there's the tool there to use. So I'll, I'll go in regularly, give them some more budget to spend and, and update them as and when new things are added. So when I go in and, you know, create new campaigns or we've added some new branded swag in, for example, um, just keeping people updated that things are there. Um, also for things like one of the um, cases that I mentioned earlier, we run an ABM certification program. So for customers that are on that and, um, and complete that, um, I'll reach out to the customer success manager and be like, hey, you know, this person's just become certified. Um, I've already set up a campaign that you can send out to them. Here's the contact. So just making it really easy um, and just to keep reminding sort of people that it that it's there. Nice. So, so you're, you're making sure you're tying the specific use case and then saying this is when you should be using it and yeah. pushing that reminder. Nice. Kelly, what have you guys seen at sales last? Have you, have you, have you been met with any resistance? Um, if so, how are, you, how are you dealing with it? Not necessarily resistance. I think it's more about like people's, yeah, it's more about just like different levels of adoption because they maybe don't feel comfortable enough to, think of the different the different ideas and then they just think I'm, I'm not going to do it at all but what's what makes it so much easier is that we have it built in sales off cadences so you kind of you have to you have to acknowledge the step that's there so you're either saying I'm going to actually skip this first optional step here and do it later or you have to think about what reach desk gift you're going to send so it's and it's now now just become a habit basically but um, we've also similarly to Leanne set up different kind of workshops with your team. So I've set up one specifically to be delivered by a reach desk SDR to our SDRs, uh, by an AE to our AEs and by customer success manager to our CS and AM team, because then they start to think a little bit differently about and they, and they realize that the person that's training them is literally in the job role that they're in. Um, so that really, really helped. But also everyone just sharing their successes when people post about like the fact that they have received an amazing gift from sales loft or they've received some branded swag or even if it's just like brownies and they start seeing it like posted up on LinkedIn and everyone in the team is giving them like kudos for sending or for thinking to send to some branded swag to this person and um, I think that gets the ball rolling it's like more about celebrating the successes because then everyone is like oh I want a piece of that absolutely love that look so <clears throat> a couple of things there is obviously like giving them the use cases the end make sure that you're positioning them in the in the right place and then reminding them it's there um the what you mentioned there Kelly about celebrating the wins we see this all the time this was quite unexpected uh, whenever someone receives a gift and I actually did it when when you lovely folks at sales loft sent me, uh, me one when we raised our series ah. B recently <laughs> it goes on linkedin this is what we see a lot so those mm -hmm. watching and listening um this channel can create that kind of virality so not just to acknowledge the person uh, who sent it but actually to start being a, a an advocate for your own brand uh, so it can spread like wildfire absolutely yeah. people nice. love it like i think i posted when i was being prospected or i was in the sales process with you guys and i received a lovely gift and then i posted and i honestly you get so much more love about it because people just love 
the fact that people were out there sending these lovely gifts to each other I think it was as well at a time which was really needed where people needed like needed something to smile about and a little gift sent to their front door during lockdown was um really special love it cool okay so we've spoken a lot about the successes of gifting that where it's gone well what, what are your key learnings from gifting have you ever seen any things that, where it hasn't gone so well or anything you can share I don't feel like I have any major failures not but just not because like I think we're all amazing but I just think that everyone you're not gonna get a really bad reaction from a gift um unless unless there was one of those and like I said earlier I had those initial concerns of like if we're rolling out gifting heavily across our team is that considered a bribe we're gonna have to think carefully about how we do it to make sure we don't get some um like negative reactions but um nothing like springs to mind with failures of course we've had people that claim and they never speak to us yeah and that's just kind of built into the budget that people will do that you know people might claim a delivery voucher on a Friday and then never say thank you or even it might just again it's rude, <laughs> it's rude. <laughs> fortunately it's it's rare but um, it does happen we've even had that happen with like a charity voucher before no response and which is madness but um so I guess no no real failures actually but like learnings I just think in terms of learnings, I think one of the main things is like listening for those signals. Like that is becoming so much more important because the gifts that are really tailored and really special like that accelerate pipeline so quickly and actually sometimes call, result in much bigger deals as well. So it's, they're just so impactful. Yeah, we haven't had any sort of major failures either, actually, but just more learnings. It's things like with the it's more on like the e-gifting sort of side is not seeing as higher maybe a redemption rate as what we would have liked. So one of the things that we have recently changed, um, so we're actually orchestrating this process. We've been working really closely with some of the Reach Desk folks. I'm going to give a shout out to Jenny and Ed because they've been really great in helping us get this set up. Um, but we're actually tying it in based on engagement criteria and we want to sort of um, really scale out the e-gifting so for when contacts within our target accounts hit a certain level of engagement so we're testing it out and we're we're just launching this now to accounts or contacts within accounts that hit um a certain amount of engagement minutes within a, a one month period and contacts that have hit um uh, or not hit that have visited a high value web page so for us that would be like our product pages our demo pages or, or, or that have viewed an on-demand um demo and we're um sending them a gift so we've got that it's orchestrated it's, it's automated to send to those accounts <clears throat> um and we're doing we're doing that through e-gift so we've got we're using um amazon gift cards for the uk europe and then some some equivalent to amazon within india and within like some of the nordic countries um, so yeah, I think based on that sort of engagement criteria and the messaging is very much like, thanks for spending some time with us recently. Here's something, um, here's something for you. So that's definitely a learning in terms of, you know, this is where we want to scale efforts because where we were seeing the redemption, we're getting really good, you know, the, um, some, some good sort of influence pipeline from that. And actually the cost, um, was, was pretty low. So we're like, actually, we really want to scale this out. So yeah, orchestration is, is one way that, that we've done that. Um, I think I've, I've got a bad experience, but it's not using reach text. This is in my early days of, it's a direct mail experience. <laughs> um, my early days of joining demand base where we used to do account drops and that would be, you'd literally have some like cupcakes or brownies and you would turn up to an account. So there would be some sort of, um, heads up to the to the contacts beforehand, but you would just show up to their office when people were in offices and you could actually go and do that. Um, and that was met with some sort of strange reactions because people were like, why are you here? You don't have a meeting. And um, they would take the gifts, but it, they were just sort of very confused as to sort of why we were there. So that, uh, we used to call them account drops. It worked really well for the US team. And at the time when they were doing them, they would be invited into a marketing team meeting. 
that never happened for us here. And it was quite, um, I, 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 it's quite toe curling when I think about it, actually. <laughs> <to those days. laughs> so that's my sort of bad experience, but it's not, yeah, not using reach desk. So the account drops didn't, didn't work for us. I have okay. a similar experience. I laugh because I'm like, I relate to it so much. <laughs> just <laughs> imagine doing this around in, London in this like with these boxes. Yeah. yeah, it was. Yeah. Gosh, I think, I think that's pretty unheard of right now, seeing as the world we're in. Um, mm -hmm. But um, I've, I've been there myself. I used to do it as well. I used to get around, uh, I used to call it door knocking and we'd bring gifts with us and it didn't work as well in the UK as I'd hoped. But uh, yeah. we live and learn. <laughs> yeah. um, nice. So I think Laura's, Laura's just posted something in the chat saying essentially, what you're describing before, Liam, was actually around like doing lead scoring, although I mm. don't use the term lead, account scoring, for yeah. engagement and then gifting them. Is that right? That's exactly it. Yeah. It's applying right. that lead scoring methodology, but at an account level. That's yeah. Very cool. Okay. Um, all right. We're, we're coming up for time. Um, now we've got a couple of other uh, questions come in. One of the ones that uh, an anonymous attendee has asked is that how are we using um, gifting and direct mail for retention? Now, I know both of you are more focused on the, well, I suppose the top of funnel growth, but are you able to share anything that you guys are doing within like the CS or customer marketing side of your businesses? Yeah, so we're using um, Reach Desk in a similar way. I've had a couple of requests this week, actually, sent out some stuff yesterday to a couple of accounts that are coming up for renewal. So we absolutely do, um, you know, send champagne in this case. Again, alcohol seems to work really well. Um, yeah, we use it, definitely use it for, for renewal. Same. Um, especially, as, I guess, as well, when, when an account is coming up for renewal and if they're maybe at risk, we might put, invest more time in, like, running some workshops with them. And with that, we'd send gifts to everyone for that workshop. Um, we're more likely to send branded swag to customers. Um, and then also it's like, again, as Leanne was saying earlier, like just celebrating successes of your customers throughout and just making sure that, You've got that really great constant communication and really good relationship with them. Nice. Okay, I love that. Um, so more at risk accounts or ones that come up for renewal. Um, we, I heard of one recently where they were sending bottles to champagne and actually like engraving the ROI in terms of like either time saved or dollars onto the bottle of champagne and then sending it to decision makers. And it's just like a, a very cool way of like surprising and delighting, but actually doing a really personalized uh, touch yeah. on top so that's maybe really, that's what one for yeah, some inspiration that. yeah that is um, inspiration definitely i love that also if someone posts about that as well great go yeah. viral there we go <laughs> exactly <laughs> love it okay um okay, just a couple of other things i would really love to touch on now you um you spoke about roi earlier in terms of like the success how do you guys measure the success of direct mail and gifting it um, let's start with you kelly at sales Law. Um, yeah, so we we kind of been looking at in general, like the redemption rate so that we can just track success of campaigns. Um, but ultimately, what we make our decisions on is like marketing influenced opportunities. And then we so we measure that on like last touch. So whether or not reach desk was the last touch before an opportunity was actually created. Um, and then we dissect that a little bit further when it comes to new deal creation and then like renewals and upgrades basically uh, so that's kind of what we look at and initially that was like more difficult because I was doing that outside of the platform and like within Salesforce but now I can do it with inside of the platform which is like the best new feature that you've ever added and I absolutely adore the insights tool now by the way <laughs> Just a little glad to hear it we've only been working on it for three years so it's about it's about time well, uh, we we've done well. We it's everything I want to see. It's everything <laughs> okay. I want to see. And also, like, some of the really cool things that you can see within it is, like, I'm able to now compare my close rate when an, a gift is attached, and it essentially doubles when there's a gift associated with an account. So that's an incredible stat alone, which I can then take to my team and incentivize them to actually use gifting at all times. <laughs> Love it. So if you're a salesperson watching this, just uh, go and ask your marketing uh, team to, to help you out and get you some licenses and hopefully your close rate will, will increase. Uh, Double. Everyone wants. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then a demand based, Leanne, is it a similar story? Yeah, it's really similar. So again, we're sort of using it from an, an engagement sort of standpoint as well. And um, are we targeting sort of, you know, multiple people in that account, how we've leveraged Reach Desk to do that. 
Um, and again, on you know, have those gifts been redeemed? And then through to things like how much is the, um, you know, what we're spending that's been redeemed and how is that then gone into uh, pipelines? But we don't look at it from a last touch. We use a multi-touch attribution model. So um, we want to see for every dollar that we've spent on a, any particular program, at least sort of a five times sort of ROI on that. Um, and that's the metric that we use to determine whether a, a program's a sort of good success for us and whether we want to sort of invest in it more. And we've definitely seen with the channels that we're using through um, Reach Desk with the redemptions that we get, you know, we want to just scale up, hence, hence doing this whole sort of orchestration um, campaign for this, this sort of based on engagement criteria. So yeah, we're definitely seeing a really good sort of impact in gifting and how that's impacting our pipeline for sure. Nice. Okay, brilliant. Well, that's all. That's uh, we're nearly up to time, but it's always good to hear how you guys are measuring the success of campaigns. Um, if anyone listening or watching, I suppose, has any final questions, that please do pop, pop them in the chat, um, and we'll come to them in a second. But otherwise, we'll be wrapping up in a, in a couple of minutes. Final question to you and Kelly, if you wouldn't mind kick us off. Um, what are you excited to try next in your gifting strategy? God, there's so much I could do. This is the thing. Like, and I think Leanne's quite similar in the sense that we own so much. We have to do we have to do so many different things for our teams that it's hard to say that you're perfect at one any one thing. And I've got so much I wish I could do in within Reach Desk. So, uh, triggered campaigns, actually using the Marketo um, integration. Um, and just actually in general, better enabling the team uh, by like building more seasonal templates and things like that. Like I feel like I could definitely increase adoption by just putting in some more seasonal campaigns and saying like, right, we're going to do a spiff around this, guys. And we're going to do like a reach desk day, like Leanne said earlier. We'll take that. Um, so there's a lot. There's a lot that I'd love to do. I really have only just scratched the surface, I think, and I'm a year in. So uh, we've seen such success already. I know that if I could um, spend a little bit more time and get my head down on it, I could build some really great campaigns. Nice. Awesome. Dan, how about you? What are you excited about um, yeah. next in, in gifting and Darren now? Similar to Kelly, really. We feel like we're scratching the surface. So um, I've got a new member of my team who's going to be responsible for our sort of reach desk strategy going forward. But these reach desk days are something that, um, are really new so excited to, to do more of those and really sort of dig into um, more highly sort of personalized and targeted gifting for those sort of more senior level contacts as well um, and then just getting more creative with what we're sending out in campaigns and tying it into some like seasonal um, seasonal um, time of year and all that kind of stuff so so yeah I think again just just scratching the surface we're about six or seven months in um so yeah just looking for for new and creative ideas and more things to to send out lovely stuff well hopefully we can help you with all of that um I never thought I'd hear the word uh the words reach desk day so maybe that should be an annual thing that we do for everyone uh, holiday. That, that's on me to, to, to kick that off oh, we just have a holiday um but uh yeah look, i think it's awesome thank you so much for, for taking the time today if there's no other um questions or anything from the audience uh we'll we'll wrap it up there um the good news is uh now i think someone's just said they want to check out demand base but for everyone I watching this just said... check out demand base and sales loft they're both yes. uh, inc incredible incredible tools that are helping i said go to market teams all the way from uh, marketing to sdrs to like sales to cs across both of them um but yeah laura looks like uh sorry um kelly looks like laura wants to check out sales loft as well so Great to hear. um both both incredible suppliers we're very pleased to be partnering with both of you um kelly leanne thank you so much for your time today and for sharing these insights and of course we will be sending you both something on reach desk to thank you for your time um <laughs> cool thanks thank a lot you. everyone thanks, thanks so for everyone for watching us. and uh and we'll speak to you all soon Thank you. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.